own this coffee shop. So can, I, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I say your names? Yay! Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, Majora and James here at the Boogie Down Grind. The drip is great. I love this place. I was just talking about the fact that I announced my run for Congress today for New York 15 against Richie Torres. Richie Torres gets a lot of money from places like IPAC because he is funding a genocide. He has no problem with babies dying. Now people say to me, well, the Bronx people don't care about, you know, uh, uh, what's happening in other countries. Okay, you want to talk about domestic policy. The same policy that is happening in Gaza right now on the genocide is the same policy that has existed in the Bronx and in the United States for the last 50 years. Okay, this is all planned shrinkage of benign neglect. These are like actual terms and the actual policies that have instructed the way in which the United States has gone in the direction for the last 50 to 60 years. Now, I'm running for Congress because I'm from the Bronx. I was born in the Bronx and I love this place. And people think that this constituency is too stupid to stand up for itself. I don't believe that at all. I believe that my people can recognize an idiot in office like Richie Torres when they see one. And that's why I'm running, because I don't want people to elect me. I am electing the people of the Bronx to actually stand up and do something. Yeah. The entire world is calling for the United States to wage peace. Will people actually take up that mantle? You are a part of this country, whether you like it or not. If you don't like this country, that's fine, but you are a US citizen. Are you gonna stand up and actually do something? Because everything that's happening under the name of the United States is happening under your name. And the more you let that happen, the more you are responsible for it. So that's why I'm running here in New York 15. I want to thank the people here at the Boogie Down Grind. And the now, who is that handsome individual? We've seen him on the show numerous times. You might know him from his very first debut when he called out Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Oh, almost like a year ago uh, at a event that she was hosting. So Jose Vega. For our viewers and subscribers, I know that you were recently on the Jimmy Dore show where you made this announcement, but also on Due Dissidents. Uh, first of all, what possessed you to try and get involved in the congressional swamp sewer gate that is Washington, <laughs> D.C.? What madness took a, took a hold of you to uh, do this? So what, 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 what was the straw that broke the camel's back for you to take this initiative because i i i, I didn't expect i was kind of like floored when i heard this answer or heard this uh that you were going to be running for congress against uh your best friend uh richie torres so uh <laughs> tell us regale us wh wh why 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 yeah no well you know uh i'm inspired by stories from people like bobby seal who ran for mayor of oakland and even though he didn't win him and the panther party were able to institute a breakfast program right that actually fed people and then the panther party went around the country and actually instituted breakfast programs it's the reason why public schools have breakfast programs today to begin with now in terms of richie torres i mean i think it's absolutely disgusting that come november people have to go and vote for the same assholes in office who have uh been calling the icj case disgusting so you know there's a press release that diane sayre put out called the congressional wall of shame there were 200 some odd congress people who uh, uh, signed this letter to Tony Blinken saying, we think it's disgusting that South Africa has the gall to um, go to the International Court of Justice and say that, uh, you know, the Israel committing genocide is, 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 is happening and they think that that's disgusting. I don't think anybody should be degraded to go to the ballot box in November and just have to pick either that or the same two people um, you know, that are just going to make things worse. And so I think I don't want to go to the ballot box in November and have to vote for Richie Torres. I mean, I don't have mm -hmm. to vote. At the same time, I think I would do a better job than he would. And that's why I'm saying, you know what, I'm just going to elect myself. I think I'm gonna, I should put myself on the ballot box. People can vote for me. They don't have to vote for me. I'm not, I'm not expecting a vote. I'm not expecting a win. And I also want to flip electoral politics on its head. You know, you're from Chicago, so mm -hmm. you should be acquainted with this story. What happened? Chicago passed the Ceasefire Resolution Act, right? Yes, yes, that right. is true. And I, while, while, while I while I am impressed that it was able to get done, I, I do think, and this may be just a, a different type of topic, I, I do think that there is going to be further fallout and ramifications for this city because it's the DNC convention's coming here in Chicago, and 
this is adding, I think, more, 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 more fuel. Yes, yes, more fuel to the fire. But I don't want, I don't want this. This is an interview about your campaign, but I, perhaps we'll talk in private or or something like that. But uh, it's, sure. I, I feel that the Chicago is going to be a powder keg, and I hope I'm wrong. But there's, I think, there's more further fallout because of it. And while it is great that a ceasefire resolution was done, where are our elected officials in Washington D.C. to actually do the thing that matters the most? And that's that's well, where it matters, D.C. Go ahead. Well, but you, but actually, but see, like that's my point is that these were high school kids, right? High school kids can't vote. High school kids mm -hmm. walked out of their schools, right? So they walked out of their yeah. schools. Yeah, exactly. They Fantastic, sat in you know. city hall. And they demanded a ceasefire resolution from the mayor. And what happened? I think it was like 23-23, and then the mayor broke the tie, right? And it was because of the high school kids that they actually got the mayor to pass a ceasefire resolution in a town that is known for corruption. I mean, this is the town of Al Capone. Okay, this is Mayor. Um, hey, mayor. whoa, 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 whoa. Al Capone did nothing wrong, okay? They only arrested him for tax evasion. They didn't get him for the outfit, okay? He was never part of that thing. They only got him for tax evasion. Yeah, right. Well, <laughs> I'm not going to get into that, but um, <laughs> there's Mayor uh, Mayor Daly. I think, uh, you know, yes. one of the most, right? They, okay, so this is not an innocent city, and they were able to do something like that. That's electoral politics. And, you know, my campaign is in the Bronx. It's in the poorest congressional district in the country right now. When people think of the Bronx, what do they think of? They think of, you know, junkies, crackheads, poverty, you know, starvation. Uh, it's also the, the most illiterate district. It's the fattest district, right? And so you know mm -hmm. what the campaign is going to do? We're going to put an astronomy club in the Bronx, right? Because mm -hmm. people need to, you know, the Bronx has to be the center for the place where people are advocating for high-speed rail, where they're advocating for, for observatories, for space centers, we are going to redefine what it means to be from the Bronx. That's what my campaign is set out to do. I don't care if I win or not. I'm not, I'm not gonna prostitute myself and tell people, oh, you should vote for me because I'm sexier than Richie Torres. I don't care about that. People mm -hmm. should vote for me because they know when, when the ballot box is and that's it. So, so uh, yeah. all right, uh, now, Look, Jose, I, I love your work with activism, how you have inspired others to call out, um, you know, politicians and confront them. And let's face it, we live in a two party system where both the Democratic Party and the Republican Party are owned by the same people. And to anyone who's a diehard Democrat voter or a diehard Republican voter, I'm sorry, your politicians don't think that much about you. But I would be wrong not to ask you some hard hitting questions, too. I think it's only uh -oh. fair for my audience since you are running for Congress. Um, a couple people have even private messaged me the same question, too, which I'm thinking you're going to be dealing with as well. But um, how would you challenge the duopoly if you were to get elected into Congress? As we all know, Washington, D.C. is the most corrupt city in the country. Remove D.C., then Chicago's number one. Hey, we did it. <laughs> yeah. DC, and, then it, it and, then, and then, of course, and then, of course, you know, you're going to be dealing with a lot of special interest groups and knowing your work and how you've confronted people like AOC and other people, part of the Democratic establishment and Republican establishment. How are you going to challenge a duopoly, especially um, when, when, when there's a very good chance you might be a one term congressman on the on the off chance that I should win? I am not working with any of those disgusting people. OK, anybody who signed that letter to Blinken should be replaced. And that's what I would work towards. I would use the fact that I'm a congressman to replace the other 434 Congress people. That's how I'm challenging the duopoly. I'm challenging it by burning it to the ground, getting rid of it. It's end the two party system. If that's if I were to win. But do I have to win to get to that? I don't think so. I genuinely don't think so. I, I think our campaign right now can be a vehicle to just get rid of the entire duopoly. Mm -hmm. that, now i go, go ahead go ahead take away i mean to interrupt you go ahead take it away no 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 that 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 that's that's basically it i mean like you know if if i were to win i'm not working with any of these fools i would just denounce them every day and i would campaign around the country in districts that i thought you know people need to be replaced in and work uh keep my head on a swivel <laughs> yes 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 you're gonna have to i think hey listen my audience they they we, we we've had you on the show before but i think you're gonna have to keep your head on a swivel in dc knowing Hey, it's 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 ancient Rome, but on steroids to eleven. So, then that, that, then another thing, I because obviously 
first of all, I, I think that is great. That should there be the off chance that you get into Congress, you're, you're going nationwide. You're going to have to represent your obviously your constituents. And there's a very good chance that, you know, a lot of people in Congress are going to be against you. But people are also going to want to look into some of the work that you've done. Now, I know that you've done a lot of activism. Uh, you've called out people like AOC and other members of the two party system. You've inspired others, but I've had a couple people ask me, uh, well, what have you done in your district? You know, we talk a lot, you know, RBN revolutionary blackout network and do dissidents have talked about and, and indie news network as well. Uh, have talked about, you know, community outreach, um, you know, doing community uh, aid, uh, you know, building up, you know, uh, you know, relief for each other in, in their communities. What, what have you done in your community uh, that would signal out to people that you're different than Richie Torres or that, you know, you have actually done things to help out your, 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 your fellow members. Like, can, can you uh, at least tell us what, what you've done in your communities that, so that when, when it does come time, people are going to be asking like, what have you done? What have you done sure. for, your, for your district? I can, I can actually give you a whole, whole history on the things that Let's I've done. It. Uh, first, I tried to go the traditional route. So when there was a gas explosion that happened down the street from where I currently live and a whole house blew up, Eric Adams was there. And I went to go intervene on Eric Adams. And uh, this was after I did the Kamala Harris intervention, but before the AOC intervention. And mm -hmm. so I intervened on him. And then he said, whoa, 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 whoa. let's talk afterwards. So we spoke afterwards. And what he, I, what I told him was this, look, I looked into the statistics of the Bronx and I told him, thank you, vote Um mm -hmm. I looked into the statistics of the Bronx. You know, there was this notion that 50 years ago, the Bronx was burning, um, <clears throat> was, was true, right? People were burning down buildings to claim the insurance um, uh, uh, money so that because it was more, it was more profitable just to burn down buildings and take the insurance money. And I said, now you're not what you're, you're not having intentional burning. You're only going to have more fires happen unless we actually address the fact that these buildings are old. There's no heat in them and people are going to start, you know, having to find alternative ways to heat their houses. And so he listened to me and he said, and I wrote all about this, but, and he said, okay, well, why don't you start a task force? And he also asked me like, well, what do you think about Richie Torres's plan? Cause here in the district, Richie Torres had this idea of, well, let's install smart thermostats. So if it gets too cold in the apartment, we can send a report to the housing and preservation development. But housing and preservation development, it, it, it's not that people aren't reporting the problems to housing and preservation development. It's the fact that HPD is not doing anything about it. So mm. I recruited a CUNY professor uh, named Roderick Wallace, who uh, has written extensively on how fires are spread, but also why the Bronx has been completely underserved um, for years now and how that has actually led to an outbreak of national pandemic. So. I did this. I got the task force ready. We wrote reports. I recruited about 20, 20 to 25 uh, college and high school students to help me on this. We had it ready. We had a meeting set with Eric Adams, and then he just canceled it. He just canceled wow. it. Wow. Out of nowhere. Eric Adams, uh, our, our, Eric Adams. Your, 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 your fantastic mayor. Don't worry. Our mayor is just as fantastic, too. So. <laughs> and, and, uh, to, you know, and I think the reason he spoke with me in the beginning was because this happened about a month after he was officially you know, inaugurated as the mayor. So of course he's going to want to, you know, talk to his constituents and whatnot. All right. That's Eric Adams. And then um, on Bowman's side, before I intervened on Bowman about a year before, and again, all of this is in like a mega thread that I wrote out after I intervened on AOC. Jamal Bowman spoke on some committee to bring fusion energy into the United States as like a real feasible program and get it developed within the next 20, 30 years. So I reached out to mm -hmm. his office to explain this idea of what I had called the Space CCC, a Space Civilian Conservation Corps. The idea that you could revitalize the Bronx as a productive center where you can train people who are high school delinquents or high school dropouts or college dropouts or juvie, you know, the people, the generation that people think that is forgotten about. Because again, it goes back to what do people think about the Bronx when they think about the Bronx? And you can actually retool them and repurpose them so that they can, uh, oh shit, I forgot I had an appointment, it's okay. Um, but you can actually retool and refocus this. I, I know, running for Congress, it's like, anyway. Well, we are glad that, 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 that you picked us up, so there you go. <laughs> don't, don't let me lose my train of thought. Um, so I, 
contacted Jamal Bowman's office saying, hey, I think your idea for bringing fusion is a great idea. And I think the Bronx would be a super center uh, for, you know, productivity. And I got on with his, um, it was his science director, his policy director at science. You know, it was, yeah, it was his senior science policy director. And we had a Zoom call and I posted the Zoom call. He said, yeah, man, let's work together on your idea. I never heard back from them either. So, you know, um, I've done a lot of work with this boxing gym that I go to um, mm -hmm. that has been a staple in the community for about 20 years now. It's called El Maestro. And the guy who started it, his name is Ponce. Uh, Cause it, you know, he's, he's a Puerto Rican nationalist. I mean, those guys are like hardcore, hardcore, like militant, like organizers in the street. Okay. Those guys are like way too hardcore for me. Um, but a part of, from being like a beacon in the community because it's one of the only things that actually works in the South Bronx to make sure that young people don't become violent and delinquent, but they actually have a place to go and, you know, absolve themselves of that energy and actually, you know, be productive. He does a lot of community fundraisers. He does a lot of, um, you know, mutual aid. He did a lot of stuff where he was fundraising for Puerto Rico. And I helped with some of that. I didn't help too much with that. I was more focused on making sure the gym itself could stay alive because it's one of the most important things in the community. And actually, if people do want to donate to that, I mean, yeah, El Maestro Gym, you can find it on Facebook and you can, he has a PayPal because he's trying to save his gym right now because the gym is at risk of being shut down because the landlord is probably going to sell the building. And so they need to, you know, and rent in New York City, I mean, is like absurd. And yeah. Bonte does a thing where he uh, he only charges like $60 a month for people to come in and they get a trainer. I mean, it's nothing. It's nothing, you know, to train at a boxing gym and get a trainer. Not only that, but he gives scholarships, which is basically like, hey, you can't pay me this month. No problem. Let's try again next month. You know, like he's like one of the, the, the better examples of coming out of the Bronx and people actually doing something. And so I wholeheartedly support what he's doing and I've helped him before. And like, now I'm trying to help him again. And, um, he recently also Richie, cause that's in Richie Torres's district. Um, I can't say too much on the specifics of what happened, but I can say this Richie Torres wanted to host an award ceremony for himself in that gym. And, uh, Ponce said, what? Uh, <laughs> an award ceremony <laughs> for yourself. It's like masturbation. What the hell? It is. It is that. And Bunza said, uh, no, because you support genocide in Gaza. And so this boxing gym has been out protesting against Richie Torres in the district, supporting Gaza. And Bunza said, I'm not taking any money from anybody who supports genocide. So, you know, I mean, I know I'm supposed to be fundraising for myself, but honestly, I think people should go and support the boxing gym. Um, mm -hmm. because that is another example of something that I would want to highlight as things that actually work here in the Bronx. So, you know, in terms of like mutual aid, community fundraising, I mean, you know, I haven't done much of that stuff. I just got to be honest with you. My vision okay. has always been, I think that things work from the top down. I believe mm -hmm. that we can revitalize the entire Bronx as a productive center. Does that mean I'm against doing that kind of stuff? No. I think that's the only kind of stuff, like, for example, what Rome does, where he goes out into Michigan and he brings clean water, or what RBN mm -hmm. has been doing recently, where they are fun. And I've donated a bit to, to their mutual aid funds. I mean, you know, that stuff's important because otherwise people who would not have the resources to live would, would you know, mm -hmm. would just be, would be, would be, right you, on. Know, you know, right horrible. On. So, right on. Uh, but. I think the very fact, though, that you need to have soup kitchens and the very fact that you need to have mutual aid speaks to the depravity of our government, that people mm -hmm. have to be the reason why people can actually continue to be alive. And my hope is that we can get to a point where we don't have to have mutual aid anymore, where people can actually wake up and be able to sustain themselves, be able to live a productive life and be happy to wake up. I mean, that's why mm -hmm. I'm running for Congress. I'm running for a federal position. I got to make sure everybody's taken care of in the country and in the mm -hmm. world. So if you, uh, I have a newsletter now, I mean, I was just working on my first email. If people have mutual aid that they would like me to promote in their community, I'll be happy to include it in my platform. I'd be happy to even put it on my website, a tab for mutual aid. I mean, I'm, you know, <coughs> I'm not against these things at all. I think they should be done because it's mm -hmm. the one thing that keeps me alive. I mean, hell, 
you know, my family and I, we go to pantries, you know? So, so here, so, so here's the thing. I, you know, it's, it's been a long time since I've actually, you know, had a, like, a, I guess a candidate who's running for office on, on our show for, for some time, I guess, obviously last year, you know, all that other kind of good stuff. What but, happened uh, Marianne Williamson? She didn't want to come on. Uh, well, <laughs> I, 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 I'm being left on red and I, I, I don't know if she's ghosting me or not. I feel so sad. But anyways, regardless, because, you know, I mean, come on, the DNC primary is a, is a waste of time. But where's Joe Biden? I, I, Joe Biden should be here. He should be getting questions from you. Well, Joe, <laughs> dude, no, I'm not. I'm not doing that. That's that's elder abuse. Come on. Man, what's wrong? With you? What's wrong? With you? But uh, yeah, right. now, 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 now everyone sees you like making fun of the elderly. What's wrong with you, buddy? But uh, no, here's 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 what I want to say, though. I I. I like this idea that at least you're giving another option for voters to, to look at. And, they, and then the off chance, should you win, it would probably be the most shocking victory of 2024. It is the year of the dragon year of good luck. So maybe, maybe fortune will smile upon you, but I want to ask you a two part question. First of all, uh, if, there is going to be the potential of a debate should one happen, which, you know, let's face it, these Democratic politicians don't like or none of these politicians, Democrats and Republicans don't like to debate anyone that's challenging them. Uh, if that were to happen, would you uh, would you be willing to set that up or or or, or debate him, uh, Richie Torres or and then number two, um, you know, when you started uh, and this is something that I, that I could see jag off people in both the neoliberal sphere and the neoconservative sphere going against you. Uh, you know, when you first were, were coming onto the scene, especially calling out these politicians, especially people like AOC, uh, a lot of your detractors are saying, well, he's with the Lelouch movement and they're going to try and smear and slander you with that. Um, I want to get your thoughts on, first of all, the debate, like should, should there one, if, if there is one going to happen, uh, would you participate in the number two? What do you want to say to your detractors who say, oh, he's part of the LaRouche movement. Uh, don't, don't, don't vote for Jose. He's, he's bad person. <laughs> very, very bad. Not good. Not great. Take it away. Yeah, sure. Well, on the debate question, I mean, first of all, becoming a candidate is probably the most important thing and becoming a candidate. What that really means is getting like for people to vote for me in November on the ballot box that requires me to get 3,500 signatures in my district, which really means 7,000 signatures because the opponents can challenge if they want to. So mm. I will not be on the ballot unless I can get people to come up and put the boots on the ground and like get signatures for right. me to actually get on the ballot. But in terms of a debate, hell yeah, if we can, if we can get me on the ballot, and like we put a lot of pressure on Richie Torres because nobody's challenging him right now. He does not have a primary challenger. I'm running as an independent. I don't know if that was clear, but okay, um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Right. No, no, yeah, no. I'm so I, I don't have to worry about primary. I, I'm in November, but like if no one else is challenging this guy, he's gonna look like a total fool to just ignore me. Especially if we can continue to like really raise the pressure on Torres. If we can really continue to like make this guy look like a fool. He has no choice but to debate me. Ideally, you know, if he ducks a debate like what I think it was Joe Crowley who ducked the debate on AOC, that was one of the reasons why he, he lost because he looked like a total fool to AOC. I mean, you know, hey, if we want Richie Torres to ignore me, I mean, because if you remember the intervention that I did on Torres, it was me saying, hey, the Nord Stream pipeline was just blown up and Seymour Hersh is saying that we did it. And then you listen to Richie Torres' response. Um... Okay, the Nord Stream pipeline is a pipeline that transfers oil. It's not, it's gas. Oil yeah. <laughs> uh, from Germany to, I mean, uh, Russia to Germany. And those are two other countries. So we have no jurisdiction. And then I just say, come on, that's bullshit. You know, that's bullshit. Come on. Like, you know, he clearly is an airhead. Now, I will say this IPAC has some very strong talking points, right? Like, you know, this Rabbi Shmuley guy who's an IDF agent, you know, like he gives RFK Jr. Like when you listen to RFK Jr. talk, you can tell like, okay, this guy has been rehearsed on the points about Israel, right? Oh, that's he wasn't what a lot ready for of Dave Smith though. <laughs> no, no, Dave Smith knew what he was talking about. And that's kind of also where I'm at right now too. I'm like, really, I've been reading Gray Zone every day. I've been reading our backlogs of our EIR news, like really understanding the issue of Israel, because that's going to be the biggest thing that I need to make sure I know more on than Richie Torres does, because <laughs> yeah, because of what I call Nancy, but I need to make sure I need I know the truth over the lies 
uh, that Richie Torres is going to be fed by the IDF. I mean, that's really what this race is. Richie Torres does not exist. This is a me versus IPAC IDF race. That guy is just all bought and paid for by Israel. His biggest donor is IPAC. So, yeah. Mm. Well, then, then, oh, then, Larouche, then Larouche, Larouche, Larouche. yeah, yeah Larouche, sorry, Larouche, yes, go ahead. So people say, ah, he's Lyndon LaRouche. He's this, he's that. He's a cult leader. You know, uh, you know, if people don't like what I'm doing because of my association with Lyndon LaRouche, I've said this countless times, just intervene yourself then do it yourself. I believe that Americans should do what I'm doing, not because I'm Lyndon LaRouche or because I'm an organizer with the LaRouche organization, which by the way, this is a great poster that the LaRouche organization put out back in the eighties, beam the bomb. This was his, um, uh, uh, SDI initiative, strategic defense initiative. The idea that you could neutralize nuclear bombs with lasers. It was a, it was a whole thing, but it was, yeah. it was a lot of fun too. But my association with the LaRouche organization, as some people saw on the documentary, you know, started when I was like 14 or 15 years old. And, I, you know, th this year makes 10 years since I've been associated with this organization. But he's just been right. I mean, he was one of the first economists to predict that if Nixon took us off the gold standard, that the United States economy would just go. And it did. <laughs> and then he predicted in the early 2000s, he actually said this to a crowd in Germany in January of 2001, he said that the incoming Bush administration is going to stage a Reichstag fire. For people who don't know, a Reichstag fire in World War II was when the Nazis burned down a library, and that's how they were able to then say, oh, look, see, we're being invaded. Oh, there's an enemy foreign. We need to take authoritative powers. And so he said that the Bush administration was going to you know, stage that. And what happened? 9-11 happened. Right. Lynn has been the only person who's actually been right on the la on the issues in the last 50 years, really, since like he started this organization in 71. Now, you know, just to address some of the slanders, people say, well, he used to beat up leftists in in the 70s. Uh, first of all, I was born in 1998. OK, even if that were true, I don't know anything about that. I was not recruited because I'm out here. People, I'm not beating up on Nancy Pelosi. I'm not even beating up on other organizers. People Your words are violent. <laughs> yeah, my words are violent, sure. But people can see what I do. You know, what I am is what I do. That's who I am. Mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, I'm not here asking people to join my organization, though you should. I'm out here asking people to be an American citizen, stand up and say, look, the world, the entire world is begging the United States to wage peace right now. OK, they're saying you, you need to stop waging war. They are not talking to Biden because Biden is asleep at the wheel. They are talking to you, the American citizen. And they are asking, will you please stop the United States from walking us into World War Three? I don't give a shit what you are. You know why? I don't like DSA. I think Democratic Socialists of America has been very impotent. You know what they're doing? They're out there organizing and they're protesting, and they're marching, and they're getting ceasefire resolutions in cities and towns. That's potent. I don't like those guys, and they're doing that, you know? Mm -hmm. Angela McArdle, she's a libertarian. I love her to death. I disagree with her completely on economics. That woman should mm -hmm. be running for Senate because she is motivated by the fact that she's like, hmm, what's going to be the best thing for my kids in the future? That alone qualifies you to be in government. And then we can argue about economics when we're in the government. So I don't care mm -hmm. what anybody's affiliation is. I care about what you're doing. And that's my response when people say, ah, but you're LaRouche. Uh, yeah, but what are you? What are you doing? Mm -hmm. That's. I think that's a fantastic note to really end it on because I know right now that you have other appointments that you do have to take care of. So real quick, this is my final question to you. Obviously, here's where people can follow you online. And on so you know, to, so if they want to help out your campaign, and I encourage people to do so. Uh, Jose Vega for Congress. Uh, I wish you all the best. And I and since you are running as an independent, I do hope that you get the uh, necessary signatures. My my advice to you uh, would be to reach out to any and all groups: libertarians, greens, independents, socialists. Yes, even Democrats and Republicans who are tired of the two party system and maybe want to vote for some somebody else. But I would say, uh, do a whole big outreach. And you know what? I think. It, 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 it would be a surprise of this election cycle 
if you were to win. And I, I think I think a lot of us in independent media would be rooting for oh, you and man. cheering you on. Uh, but uh, for for a final note, too, you are also part of a documentary that do dissidents put together. So I just want to get your thoughts and then I'm going to close out this uh, great interview uh, with uh, with a trailer of that um documentary that's happening so can you at least talk about what you and do dissidents collaborated on and a little bit about the documentary yeah yeah yeah, sure no so do dissidents came to my house in april of 2023 um Mm. and they recorded me uh talking about the interventions and what i really like about the documentary is that it includes gaza in that and it, it ends on the note with like what other interventions are doing um I think it's a great tool for people because it explains the LaRouche thing, for example, you know, uh, in the beginning and what motivates me. <clears throat> but also, I think it puts the challenge on people to act. You know, it's like, hey, now it's your turn to go and do it. And so I'm, I'm very proud of, of what they did. I mean, it's a funny documentary. It's also kind of emotional at times. I had to walk away from the screen because there was some stuff I didn't want to relive there. And um yeah, I, I think I think that honestly the documentary speaks for itself. And and I just want to say one more thing. My first I keep forgetting to, on every interview I've been on, I keep forgetting to say this. My first oh. public appearance will be on February 18th. And if people want February. information on how mm-hmm, February 18th, if people want to figure out how to meet me, come and see me talk, they should sign up on my website on the on the volunteer uh to get get in the email list so I can then tell you about where to go. Yeah, volunteer right there. Yeah. So, uh, so volunteer. So if they want to go to v- click on that, go to volunteer. Yeah. There you go. We click on that. All right. There you go. <laughs> and then they join get up on my email list. Yep. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Fantastic. And then you can stay updated. So, uh, yeah, look, Kit, thank you for having me on. If I win, Absolutely. I'm going to drop you guys so fast. I'm going to sell out so quick. <laughs> I'm gonna like. I freaking knew you. it. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll tell you why how I knew it. It was this interview in which you revealed <laughs> when you said that Al Capone was was part of climate. He wasn't. They arrested him for tax evasion. He wasn't <laughs> part of that thing. There's no evidence or proof. No evidence or proof. So so here so here uh, as as we get ready to close out this interview and then we get ready to continue on with the rest of our main show, Can TV. If you want to know more about Heartlands Media, follow us on YouTube, Rumble. Rockfin, Odyssey, and Kick. That way you can see our show every Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. Central. Uh, Jose Vega, uh, I know this is where do this. We're going to just play just a few short minutes of this. This is uh, Keaton and Russell who have been on our show but also hosted the Jimmy Dore show as well who have been doing some fantastic work and very good allies like you've been. Thank you also for your solidarity, especially when we were, uh, well, let's just say we, we 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 couldn't go live and we were terminated and you uh, definitely were a huge support and ally. So I wish you all the best in all your future endeavors for your campaign and uh, I'll be rooting for you. So nonetheless, right. Jose, thank you so much, everyone. Let's go ahead and check out this uh, just short snippet from Do Dissidents and this documentary and then we'll continue on with the rest of our main show. Uh, and enjoy our film, Ruckus. This is a very intimidating place to be. (laughs) I have a television show, which I mean, I I know technically is sort of like public speaking, but I can't see anybody's face when I do that. So it freaks me out. Um, I will also say just tonight, especially feeling the the gravitas and the, moral weight of this place. I know there's a lot of things to be paying attention to in the world right now other than a book. And so to see you all here and to be together to talk about this topic really moves me. So thank you. Um, Rachel, I'd rather not listen to your boring book because you are here to get Israel wrong yet again. Just like you got 2016 wrong Yet again, all you are is the biggest war monger. You and the rest of the media are the biggest war mongers ever. 
Why is it that other countries are calling for peace? Brazil, Russia, India, and China all call for peace. But the United Nations, and what do you do? You're just a big, ugly thing. You're a warmonger. All of you are just straight warmongers. That's right. Look at what they do to free speech. There's an ethnic cleansing in Gaza, and all you do is tell lies about it. You and the rest of the media are warmongers. And if you want to see out the full documentary video, please visit Do Dissidents. They are doing phenomenal work. Please be sure to check them out. Jose Vega, once again, keep on doing the phenomenal work. We will see all of you on the main show. Until then, peace and take care. That was just a short snippet from it. If you want to see the full thing, go to Do Dissidents on their YouTube channel, Rumble account, and all of their other social media. Until then. See all of you very soon. Radio station just censored the word devil. <laughs> Clearly, we are on a different level. I guess you wouldn't notice all the rolling boulders crashing past your shoulders when you're taught to shift your focus lower, scream at all the pebbles, cheering on the bombers because you can't abide the rebels. But I bet you'll wring your bloody hands when all the dust has settled, when the last little limb is pulled from Gaza's twisted metal. Then you can say how you were led astray, and never once in all your days would you have knowingly supported all the genocide for which you clapped and prayed. But they baited you with unconfirmed blurbs about babies until you were filled with rage. Yet someone told you babies had been starving, bombed, and caged for nearly 80 years in Gaza, and you looked the other way. So regret, but make it fashion. Go and pluck that final petal off a hyacinth on Instagram for every kid they kettled. Every son that Israel imprisoned when they're little, that they tortured for a decade, then surprised with their acquittal. And when they got released and saw their parents and whatever siblings hadn't met the missiles, they stared right through their middle. Their eyes don't seem to focus, and their words are all but dribble, like they're pondering the darkest riddle. That is, how many false flags does it take to make humanity inhuman and uncivil, distorted by the revel? The crooked slant where Israel contorts into America, Biden bathing Bibi in a bloodbath in the bevel. I opened up my feed and I saw children disassembled, turned some music on and heard the station censor devil. Imagine thinking Doja Cat's a threat to moral fabric in the single largest terror cell that ever felled a temple that ever sparked a cleansing, that ever burned a market, that ever raped with bayonets or carpet-bombed apartments, that ever turned your water off and left you in the darkness, left you doing surgery on children while they're conscious. You sing the devil's praises every time you sing our anthem. You sing a hymn to him that watched us birth a million phantoms. You'll proudly wave his flag, and yet you will not name the devil? Well, clearly, we are on a different level. I can give you names, shit, I'll give you several. They say the devil wears a different face for every general. Like a composite of the char he brought to fields of emerald. And the wail of every childhood we made ephemeral. So who else has left the stain of blood on everything they touch? Who else can starve civilians and they don't so much as blush? Who else has paid for Gaza being flattened into dust? If there's ever been a devil on this earth, then it is us. That's U.S. What an ugly couple letters. Feeding shit and ignorance to those it chose to tether. From the river to the sea, both are slowly growing redder. For the devil that you know just knows you better. It knows every gut reaction it could ever make you feel. It knows fear is that which wakes you up and gets you on your wheel. It knows just the kind of story that will justify its war. And the scripts are wrapped for World War IV. So just imagine my surprise to give the radio a listen and to hear such pious morals out of Zionists and Christians that they'd take the devil's name and try to clip it from existence while they carry out his bloody business. You would wave a fascist flag and yet you honor not your Iblis? Name you not Apollyon? Hush you now your witness? Bleed the name of Belial till tongue is rolling listless in the man-made mouth of Mammon. As Lamia's whispers listen, when carts are wheeling bodies through the cities that we crushed, 
and the very air is rotten with decay of all that was. Who else would censor devil yet behave as legion does? If there's ever been a devil on this earth, then it is us. U.S., but not a unity of souls. More a mass of corporations turning houses into holes, turning people into puppets, turning puppets into mold, turning mold into nutrition bars worth their weight in gold because they're bombing every bakery and burning every field with phosphorus that never once has wanted for a meal. The devil wears a mask and it delights in the reveal. In that moment where the face is let to peel, we do not love the underdog. We do not cheer the rebels. We lust for all their blood until the dust has finally settled. Then pity just ourselves that we were so misled to revel. Proudly wave his flag, and yet we will not name the devil. <laughs>